and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Teemo Dreadway. That's right, we're going to be playing a deck based around dealing a whole lot of damage with different things, including Puff Caps. So we're going to have our Teemo with our Puff Caps, with our Puff Cap Peddler and a Chump Lump. So we'll have that package trying to give them a lot of Puff Caps. But then we're going to have Powder Kegs and Damage Sources. So we'll have like Powder Kegs with Mystic Shot and Get Excited, Parlay, Thermogenic Beam. Be and then we'll have the OG Powder Keg, or I guess the, the big Powder Keg, of course, with the Dreadway, which doubles all damage dealt by your your skills, spells, and allies. I believe that includes Puff Caps, that it'll double the damage of Puff Caps, but um, with uh, in chat here, most people say that it should double the damage, but uh, some people say that it won't double the damage, so we'll just have to play and see, but I think it doubles the damage from Puff Caps. It also doubles the damage from Riptide Rex, and Puff Caps are a great way to turn on Plunder to be able to have your Riptide Rex available immediately. They draw a Puff Cap, then boom, get to drop your Riptide Rex, so no warning shot required. Um, don't need to give them any warning. And then, of course, we'll have uh, Gangplank in here that does the powder, cake st uh, powder Keg stuff and levels up each time they draw a Puff Cap. You know, does that counts as damage uh, for each round. Sprayfin drawing cards, same with Salvage, so we get some card draw in here. Pretty cool little deck here. All right, so that's our that's our deck, Teemo Dreadway. Let's see if we can uh, take three copies of Dreadway, three copies of Riptide Rex. We've got some big top end. Let's see how we can do with that. Ooh, Frostbite midrange. So this is difficult for a couple of reasons. Man, yeah, this is actually, this is a tough matchup for a few reasons. Uh, we're gonna mulligan the Dreadway. I mean, we have a lot of top end cards like the Dreadway. So we want we want our opponents to play slower decks because the longer the games go, the better for Puff Caps. So, right, we want them to be slower decks. Or if they're a faster deck, we want, you know, we need to be able to like um, have all of our sm small damage sources be able to take their things out. So we want them to be playing, um, you know, small units if they're a fast deck. Frostbite Midrange is a fast deck that plays very large units. So that's a pretty rough combination. I guess I'm just going to pass. Just going to play this on my turn. Just going to see what they do. I like that we got the backup Teemo. I have the 5 mana for the Dreadway deck hand plus make it rain at combo. Sure did. Another day in the field. You did your best. Winter take you. Faster than my arrow? I think not. Be nothing left when I'm done. Probably faster than your arrow. All right, deal two damage to each of those. Put Ash down to one health. Cool, get a Dreadway. Not a bad card. Hey, what's up, Delphinus? Yeah, I got your donation deck here. Yeah, I know. Remember back in the day when Mega Rain was two mana? Back in the day. So I'm just doing this during combat before they can play another unit. I do want to deal the, you know, I want to try to kill the Ash. All right, very good. Right, like if I just like attack, um, and then they play like Omen Hawk. Which I guess. I guess if I would have done that first, though, maybe I could have attacked with the Dreadway Duck Hand as well. To no one. I really want to kill my Teemo. I don't like it. I refuse. So Teemo's still going to die to the 3-2. But I like getting Sejuani out of here. So I'll 7 mana next turn, so enough for Gangplank plus Mystic Shot. 
Could also just go to attacks first. No, we'll play Gangplank first. So in an ideal world, they will draw a puff cap next turn to help out my Riptide Rex. That would be an ideal world. I know a challenge when I see one. But if not, we could also have the Dreadway in play first before the Riptide Rex, so we double all of the things there. That would be good too. So the Game Plank has Overwhelm. It's going to do all that damage. Their hand must be looking a little rough that they played the Trifarian Assessor to just simply block with. Gotcha. Must be looking a little rough. The ocean herself will fear us. There's no finer sight. These stories were true. Get excited at six damage. That's a lot of damage. Giving them another chance to draw puff caps. Then draw more cards. Ah, no puff cap. All right, pass turn. Did I just give him that reckoning? I might have just given him that reckoning. I'm not sure. But I did get them a puff cap this turn. And with them not having any Nexus healing. Carved from the savage cold. Pretty sure we're good. I guess I'm yeah, like they don't have Nexus healing, right? So I just go get excited, Mystic Shot their face, but Riptide Rex is so cool. Yeah, is it better to Rex than win? <laughs> that's that's the question. I don't think they have any Nexus healing. I'll keep Mystic Shot available. Slash Riptide Rex, depending on what they got. Okay. Good win. Drink up. The taverns will sing our tale this eve. Another tryhard poros. Donation deck. Alright, let me write that down. Keep. This deck's looking pretty good. The chains, they never stop. So I guess this is they who endure with Nocturne instead of Elise. Or sorry, sorry, instead of Callista. They who endure would be a problem. So I can Thermogenic Beam the 4-3 right now, I take 6. I could take 8, Mystic Shot the 2-1, and then after damage I Thermogenic Beam. So I say, you know, I take 2 extra damage. Basically, I'm, so I'm costing myself 2 life to be able to cast this Mystic Shot. Okay, as I say, they, they could also go the 0 mana 3-2 and sacrifice one of these, and then I would have had the opportunity to play the Thermogenic Beam right then. Endure as, is going to be a big problem. Maybe they'll just never draw They Who Endure. If they're out there, I'll spot them. That'd make my life easier. 
These old eyes still see Triple Averrosen Sentry. Warden's Prey made one. I'm down to six. I want to get them a lot more puff caps before killing these sentries so that they're drawing into all the puff caps. Could just, I could just go triple Mushroom Cloud and then make it rain. Doesn't sound that bad. Hopefully we hit all three of them. And I get to attack with these. Okay. One puff cap drawn. There we go. Some more puff caps. I could certainly see them playing an ephemeral thing to block. What does he want from me? Oh, just a warden spray. Alright, well, I'm, you know, I'm gonna be trying to do the, tw the four damage. I'm probably gonna need it. Sprays are awesome. They're just making Avaros and Sentries and Cursed Keepers. No puff caps there. What? We're not challenging at all? Why they not challenge? You got legs. Use them. My siblings. So I know it's me going to two, and that that I'm de I'm dead if they have the three mana, three two that deals two damage. I could have saved two life with the Mystic Shot, but I think that the best chance of me winning this, you know, actually winning and not just not dying. I think the best chance of me winning is. Being more proactive. Mm. I want Riptide Rex there. Keep up, keep up. Thermogenic Beam's the worst card for us to hit. Not, it's like the only card that's not the burn spell. Right, cause I need I need just burn spells because I'm I'm hoping that they just draw puff caps and that we can do like eight damage because right like we're we're dead on the attack so that's my hope so we need burn spells no I need see I need like that get excited okay mystic shot that's a burn spell so we got four damage they need to draw four puff caps four puff caps please zero. All right, playing against the deep deck. This could be a good matchup for us. With these, all these puff caps against the deep deck. Um, some, some people play Withering Whale in deep, yes. Some people do. Have a mushroom. Just gonna keep my mana. My spell mana for like Mystic Shot, Mushroom Clouds. That kind of stuff. I don't like that. I like my Puff Cat Peddler. No, I'm not going to attack with it. They block with their 2-3 and then challenge with the 1-1. One, one. I'm not going to mess with that. Corruption everywhere. I got ways to find me mushrooms. Hey, TK. 
I'd have a better chance, like I could kill Maokai if I would have gone Dreadway Deckhand last turn and then Gangplank this turn. I'm going more for the Peddlers instead. Double Vengeance gone. Well, that's something. See, I want them to toss cards before we put these puff caps. Or like, get their deck size to be smaller so there's more concentration of puff caps on different things. Oh, that's annoying. That's annoying. So they don't have room. Like, if they play a unit, they don't have room to get a sapling. Alright, getting deeper into the deck. Good for puff caps. So they're at 21 and 5. Does give them room for a sapling now. I'm planning on open attacking, I think, this next turn. I expect they're gonna play a unit here. Missed call. All right, let's see what we got. Not too bad. I don't want them to block my peddlers. Like with, you know, with the things that kill them. Yeah, Passage Under Earth. I guess they're trying to yeah, counter War Mothers, I guess. That's not great for me because now I don't have the uh, Parlay to finish off Abyssal Eye. Oh, wow. Alright, so now they're at 11 and 13. I'm not sure which one of these two I want to kill, Maokai or Abyssal Eye. It's Abyssal Eye. Yeah, because I draws cards, which is good for the puff caps. But Abyssal Eye can kill me much faster. If the game goes longer, like, even if we have, like, the only four cards left, even if Maokai levels up, like, these Riptide Rexes should be finishing stuff out. So I, I need the game to go longer, like, with, with the puff caps and everything. So, 8 and 20. So those three had six puff caps, so now it's 5 and 14. It doesn't kill Maokai, but kills the rest. <laughs> That's the sorry, not sorry emote. So yeah, they level up Maokai, but... I think we can win in the next four cards. Each one of their card having an average of three puff caps. Alright, they're back up to 
eight. Start getting blockers out. Consider going, you know, just going like this route of playing another peddler, double chump wump. Um, it's 22 puff caps. Or like, you know, double mushroom cloud, just 22 more puff caps. <laughs> so, you know, another four cards with an additional 22 puff caps. Assuming they're going to play Nautilus this turn, Nautilus will put back a bunch of sea monsters. So, like, we want to do that after, you know, like, so we play peddler, they play Nautilus, you know, and so on. Pretty good. Away, so seven five blocks Riptide Rex, two one blocks Peddler, seven seven blocks Gangplank, which will level up. They'll take four, go down to two. They'll have one thing alive. I'll have one thing alive. And they're at two with drawing into this kind of puff cap. You defile the grove. Okay, so they're gonna have two things alive. And I'll I'll have two things alive. Oh yeah, yeah, G yeah, Gangplank won't level up. I mean it doesn't really matter whether Gangplank's a 5-5 five -five or a 6-6, six -six, but okay. It doesn't level up. Vessel small, but Jake lacking courage. So they just gotta draw three puff caps. They have over three puff caps a card. There we go, Drew six. GG's, two and one. Our plane versus some more mothers. Where's our pas passage unearthed? Our opponent was ready. Our last opponent, they were ready. All right, I want my puff cap stuff. Ugh. I guess we get our salvage stuff. I wanted like turn one Teemo, you know, puff cap peddler, that kind of stuff. All right, so yeah, we'll play the the deck hand, get attacking started. Yes, yeah, Dreadway should double the damage from puff caps, so it. Most everybody in chat saying that it does. A couple of people saying that it doesn't. If I Bastion a Nautilus Riptide, does the Nautilus fizzle? Yes. I think... S actually... Okay, if you deny it, it fizzles. But actually, Bastion is works a little different. Um, let's just play this right now while we have... that, So we don't waste the one mana... I think Bastion, the spell still resolves. It just resolves and targets the Bastion. So the worst part about playing Sprayfin is Avalanche. But if they're playing Avalanche, they're not playing Trundle. Nothing escapes my watch. So what I like about Make It Rain is that it, it does help level up Gangplank. It turns Gangplank into 3 out of 5. I was definitely considering just blocking and then just casting Gangplank afterwards. Um, and just, you know, not worrying about the that whole thing. But I think I like that, that it... Um, that's 3 out of 5 now for Gangplank. To 
Leave your bags at the door. We've just drawn all damage spells. There we go. Dreadway's good. We certainly prefer to have Puffcat Peddler in this matchup. You know, Teemo, Puffcat Peddler would have really liked to have that kind of stuff in here. I smell a fight! Let's do this! So my consideration is therm I think I'm going to thermogenic beam this turn and I can, you know, either kill the weirding stones and shut them down of one mana, but at this point I don't think that that's that important. Um, I'm going to actually kill half of the Trindamir. I know that now it's going to attack for more. It's going to be a 9-9. Nine -nine. But we have to, you know, like if... It's going to be difficult to deal with that Trindamir anyway. This makes it a little easier. It's just a one-time 9-9. Nine -nine. I want to try to have like these get excited and stuff for up for their nexus. Eventually, when we get to nine mana, still a couple of turns off from that. Uses two extra mana that I don't want to use, but oh well. Impossible. Guess maybe I shouldn't have played that Mystic Shot. I could have salvaged if I didn't play the Mystic Shot. I like that Chump Lump draw. The coral. That can be good. So I Chump Womp, I give them both Mushroom Clouds, um, and then save two spell mana, so next turn I have Dreadway with two mana. Yep, I agree that they that they are um, pondering what they want to do in the face of Riptide Rex. They don't have any Aurelian Souls in their deck, they're not Targon, I mean they, they could have just gotten Aurelian Soul with the Howling Abyss, I suppose. Looks like they're Feel the Rush or War Mother's Call. I would rather they play War Mother's, I think? So the So obviously this is terrible news. The only good news is that, you know, Trindamir is not like a 10-10 that then we kill and then it turns into a 9-9. At least it's just a 10-10. But still, that's probably game. Yeah, I, I would have rather had War Mothers. I mean I would have rather them not play either. I got ways to find in mushrooms. Pay dirt! How do we stay alive? I'm gonna make a <laughs> Basically, can I stay alive and not have my Dreadway die? If if that's possible, if we can stay alive and not have Dreadway die, we have a chance, but I, I don't think that's the case. I guess we have to have Dreadway die. We, I guess we still have a chance even with Dreadway dying. Work, you dogs. We obviously can't beat Atrocity. Oh, they challenge over here. Oh, no, 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 they can't challenge over there. Okay, right. So atrocity means we're dead. They couldn't. They couldn't open attack because the Trundle didn't have. They had to play this to give the Trundle overwhelm. They had to play that. So they had to play the Ice Pillar first. This is gonna be fun. Ready to hook. So vengeance, we die, and yeah, vengeance or atrocity, we die. No vengeance, no atrocity. We can maybe pull this off. So we're 
be trying to just have all this damage go upstairs. We have eight more damage to deal. Okay, well they just have atrocity, so we're dead, but... We set up ourselves the best that we could. All right, we're two and two. All right, same matchup. Hopefully we get the Puff Cat part of our deck. All right, there's a Teemo. Sprayfin is good too, but we're gonna mulligan Sprayfin. No Peddlers. Peddler is the card even more than Teemo. I'd rather have Peddler. I think Peddler is the most important card. But we'll try the Teemos. We'll get them going. It's a lot of Teemos. And ready. Bleh. I'm just gonna pass. Hopefully this Teemo doesn't work. Mm. Some very low impact cards for this matchup. Nothing escapes my watch. I'm gonna be casting the parlay on their turn to do damage to them on their turn for. So it means I take four, take four damage, but for uh, Gangplank, for leveling up Gangplank. I guess I'll just cast that at eight because of Troll Chant. So like, I guess like you know, like Troll Chant can't save Trundle now, but we don't get the parlay damage on their turn. Um, Jess asks, is Feel the Rush broken? And possibly, right, you know, we haven't really found the a broken part of it yet, but I mean, a card that, that that's, that's that powerful, um, you know, putting two 10-10 champions into play, there's a, there's a possibility that, you know, in, in a month, there's Feel the Rush decks everywhere and it's broken and everything like that. Like, it's definitely possible, especially for how good the ramp is. Yeah, it's possible. All right, so I'm con I'm considering passing, and they waste their turn. No, that's not the thing to do. Force them to have removal on the Teemo. Maybe they don't. Maybe they take it and double up their 15 puff caps to 30. Ah, they just drew that, but yeah, they still spent seven mana vengeance on my one mana card. So we got one last Teemo. I've killed the other two. Those jerks. This is them drawing another card. Don't love that part. Prepared for anything. For anything. All right, another Vengeance. So another Teemo down. They take four, so I could go Riptide Rex right now. 
That does seven to them, that would put them down to six. Or I wait till after Dreadway. I don't really want to wait till after Dreadway. I think by in two turns after we have Dreadway, if if Dreadway survives, you know, we'll probably have something else to do. Of course, they're probably going to go like Ice Pillar and then something awesome. This could be a pretty poor turn for us. You know, like Ice Pillar, and then, and then like Trindamir, and then Atrocity. This could be pretty bad. Yeah, that's the that's the worst that can happen. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna Mystic Shot the Trindamir. So the Mystic Shot does four, so it kills it. So the Trindamir levels up, so it's a 9-9, nine, nine, but then my Riptide Rex kills it, because the Riptide Rex does 14, because all of our stuff's doubled. So we get to just kill the, the Trindamir. So don't have to worry, to, so we can't just die to Atrocity. And so I could attack right away. They've already played two Vengeance. All right, so they drew two, took four damage. So yes, it is doubled. All right, so that, that has been proven that it doubles. They've already played two Vengeance, so not super likely to have another. Flash Freeze. All right, that'll keep him alive for now. And of course, we can find some burn spells with Salvage. So, like I was saying, I think I think that I would I'd be pretty confident in playing this matchup most of the time. I think that we would go over fifty percent. You know, we lost the first one. Looks like we're winning this one. Who would face me? I am reborn of salt and bright. Get the cool gangplank animation. I will do four. And then this one will go back to doing two. GG's. Three and two. This will do for now. This deck looked pretty nice. I like this. I think that, you know, like there's a lot of like those Freljord Shadow Isles decks, and I think that this could do pretty well against them. Um, the that win against Frostbite Midrange was a very impressive win. Um yeah, I liked how this deck looked. Um, somebody mentioned a soloist in here, and I wouldn't mind putting having like one soloist in here because this deck is very uh, mana intensive, um, especially with having you know three salvage, three salvage, and then three riptide rex, three dreadway. Really mana intensive here, and you know like we get to draw the cards. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really mind having a soloist. The card that probably impressed, and then of course Thermogenic Beam takes up a ton of mana also for us. The card that impressed me the least was the Parlay. I didn't really like the Parlay. The Get Excited. I don't know, we had we had like that one game. We only really drew Get Excited like the one time against the Freljord Shadow Isles deck where, you know, we just had like multiple Mystic Shots, Get Excited, all that kind of stuff early. But honestly, Get Excited may not really be that necessary. I know it can finish opponents off, um, but it may not be really that necessary either. Parlay, of course, is great against aggro. Turn, like great turn one against aggro, or even, even like turn two. 
But those are, I mean, I guess they're, I guess those are the two two ofs. <laughs> Everything else is the three ofs, which that kind of makes sense. All the three ofs are all, all pretty good. Um, so yeah, I guess I would, I would keep trying to play a little bit more with it, but that's the parlay, the get excited. I would think about maybe trimming there. And, and honestly, this really could be a pretty decent smooth soloist deck because you do need, like I said, like the, like your man, your mana is, um, is strained pretty hard here. So getting, getting, uh, the reduction of cost of all of the allies in your hand in deck by two could be really awesome. Plus smooth soloist is an elusive. I would, I would just go ahead and play one and I would play one. Over one of these two, get excited or parlay. If, you, if you're if you expecting more Misfortune and Nocturne, you probably want to keep the get excited. Um, if you're expecting more of like the hyper aggro, probably want to keep the parlays. But honestly, I would, I would just get rid of a parlay. Yeah, that's what we do. Let's just cut a parlay. Because even the hyper aggro, you're playing, like they're playing like Draven, Jinx. Misfor you know, then you have Misfortune, Nocturne. There's just so many good champions you can kill with Get Excited. Par yeah, the, the parlay didn't look that great in our hand. Let's get, yeah, let's let's just cut a, cut a parlay for a smooth soloist. There's a way to, to fit one in here that can reduce the cost of all of these. Might be pretty nice. Because then after you smooth soloist, then Sprayfin costs two mana and gives you a mana back. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um... So yeah, that's I would make that little change right there. All right, that's Timo Dreadway. Pretty impressive. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.